Right then, what's happening, guys? So Tottenham are closing in on the signing of Manor Solomon on a free transfer, and I tell you what, this is the type of player they've been crying out for over these last half a dozen years. Is Solomon going to come in and make a significant difference to the first 11 by starting week in, week out? Probably not, but what he does bring is strength and depth. We all saw how Son Hyun Min struggled for form last season, and to have some actual competition for places will bring the best out of one and all at the football club. While Solomon's medical is scheduled for next week, the official announcement of his incoming should take place over the next 24 to 48 hours. The Athletic claim it's a four-year deal, while Fabrizio Romano is suggesting that it'll be five. So take your pick in regards to who you believe, because they're both highly reliable sources. Now, the reason Solomon arrives for no fee is a bit of a strange one. His contract with Shakhtar was due to expire on December 31st, 2023. However, FIFA ruled in May that all foreign-based players in Ukraine or Russia would be able to suspend their contracts for another year, by which time his current deal would obviously expire, thus allowing him to become a free agent six months earlier than he was supposed to. A a big kick in the teeth from Shakhtar's perspective and their feud with FIFA will likely drag on at the court of arbitration for sport over the next few months. Moving on to how Solomon's fared in the Prem with Fulham so far, truth be told, he had a very difficult year from both a personal as well as professional perspective. After making his debut off the bench against Liverpool during the opening day of the season, he suffered a serious knee injury in a behind closed doors friendly the following day which kept him out of action for 5 months, leaving him with not much to do in a completely new environment as a supposed dream move quickly turned into a nightmare. However, he came back with a bang following the World Cup and made his presence felt by scoring in five consecutive matches across February and March, with three of these goals coming off the bench, something he'll be expected to do plenty of at Tottenham. In fact, his four Premier League goals have come in just 561 minutes, which is essentially six 90-minute games of football. Not the biggest sample size by any stretch of the imagination, but more than enough to showcase just how talented this fella is. In terms of what you can expect from Solomon on the pitch, the first word that springs to mind when describing him is flair. Not only does he not shy away from one-on-ones, but actively goes out in search for them, whereby he uses his low center of gravity and turn of pace to escape his marker. Technically, he's raw but unpredictable, with dragbacks, flicks, and stepovers galore. If you look at his stats, he's up there with the very best in terms of non-penalty goals, successful take-ons, and passing. Furthermore, he works incredibly hard out of possession with a plethora of tackles, blocks, as well as interceptions which suits Postecoglou's game down to a T. What I love most about the bloke is he's equally as adept at playing on the left wing as he is the right, although does have a slight preference for the former. He's a big game player too. He scored in a one-all draw away to Man City, who actually tried to sign him back in 2017, while also bagging the winner both at home and the Bernabeu against Real Madrid a couple of years ago. Physically, he can at times get targeted due to his 5'7 frame, but so far has coped with it better than I expected. And this was probably aided by the fact that he served in the Israeli defense force so it's not one to be fucked with. Last but not least, Spurs supporters should expect plenty of backing from Israelis moving forward. Despite being only 23, Solomon has been their leading light for quite some time now. And much like Son in South Korea, viewership will be through the roof whenever he's on the telly, as sports pages across the country cover every inch of his exploits on and off the pitch. Look no further than all the Israeli flags in the stands at Craven Cottage last season, with reported ticket demands for their games increasing a thousandfold. It should therefore come as no surprise that Solomon's shirts were the most popular ones sold by Fulham by a significant margin, and the marketing aspect of this deal is very much worth noting in the modern day game. Overall, I'm really liking the moves Spurs have made so far. I was dead certain they were done for after last season, but at least on paper, that seems like it won't be the case. As always, I hope you found this video useful, implore you to subscribe so that my channel can keep growing, and I'll catch you in the next one folks. Peace.